Hey Floss Tube! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Phoebe and this is a channel about cross stitch. Thanks for those of you who watched my 2024 whip parade and left such kind sweet comments. I really appreciate that. If you're new here because that video brought you to my channel, hello. So my name is Phoebe. I am a mother for a stay at home mom and I have one kiddo on the autism spectrum. He kind of, we go day by day. If he's gonna be able to stay at school, how his day is gonna go, he needs pretty much constant supervision. So I chose a career that I could do from home. I own a handmade nail polish company that I manufacture here out of my home in my basement. I have my whole studio kind of warehouse area. And so that's what I do. And when I'm not doing that, I'm stitching and I'm usually listening to audiobooks or listening to floss tube. So that's a little bit about me. I live in Utah out in kind of like the ranchy area. And I just love um, just being able to see the mountains every day, being so close to the mountains. And we really love it here. So that's us. Our last name is Moon. That's why my brand and this channel, I named it Moonshine Stitchery because my brand is Moonshine Manny. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. We are gonna go ahead and get into just like a regular two week update that I do every other week. I have a lot of whips to share with you. I have a new start. I have a little bit of acquisitions. A sweet subscriber sent me a few patterns and I'm excited to show you those things. Um, and then at the very end of the video, I will have a little bit of book chat. So I'll definitely let you know before I get there, if you're not interested in hearing about what I've been listening to while I've been stitching slash working on in the last couple weeks. So we should go ahead and get into it. Let me go ahead and start with my new start. So this is a project that I saw both Kim Goldman on her channel, Contented Needle Worker Kim and Audrey on Stitch Stitch Bead Share. And honestly, when I saw Kim talk about it, I was like, oh yeah, that's really cute. Then when I saw Audrey talk about it, I really, really fell in love with it. If you don't watch Audrey's channel, pretty much every project she's working on is stunning and I wanna stitch it. So this sal that they're starting together, I'll put the hashtag down here. I am really not good at posting on my my stitchy Instagram when I'm doing things. Um, but there is a sell for this. So this is Emmeline Hotchkiss 1846 from Cross Stitch Antiques. And the colors are really what got me here. I just think it's really beautiful, very summery. And as we're coming into summer, I'm going to really enjoy stitching on this. So they started this project together on April 1st, I think. So that's when I did as well. So as is pretty customary for me, if you're new to my channel, you will learn that I really enjoy dyeing my own fabric. And so this is a fabric dye, piece of fabric dyed by me. This is 40 count. Um, and then also a thing that I really like to do is my own conversion of flosses because after collecting floss for, you know, a few years of steadily collecting things to kit things up and just being parts of different clubs, I have a lot of floss. So when I want to make a new start, like with this one, I don't necessarily feel the need to purchase all of the call for flosses. I just pull from stash and I usually, um, I'm pretty pleased with that. So this is my own conversion of flosses, which I'll show you in a minute. So I actually started in the top right hand corner this time, which is pretty unusual for me. I usually am a top left hand starter, but I decided to do something a little different. And this design is so fun. So this was one day of stitching on this. And I really just love the colors and it's a pretty quick stitch actually. So I based my conversion off of the DMC um, list of flosses and there really aren't that many. I think there's eight. So if you would like to know what I'm using, um, you can comment or you can email me or you can message me on any of my Instagrams. All that stuff is down in the description bar below. I'm usually, usually on one of my two nail polish Instagrams more than on my flossy one, but you should be able to find me in any of those places. Um, so, or you could send me a Facebook Messenger message. 
there's lots of lots of places to contact me but anyway here are my colors so basically I had two of the called for I had Grecian gold and that's heavily used in this pattern um, for all of the vining on the border so I had that so that was good and then I actually had the floss that they called for um, in place of I believe it's the darker green I have the pattern right here let's just look it up it also calls for weeping willow and I had that but I wanted something a little bit more green so weeping willow is like a little bit lighter green and I wanted it a little little richer so um, I'll just tell you I'm using cinnamon twist from weeks I'm using Gloriana baby corn these are all just things that I had in my stash um, English Ivy from Classic Color Works. I'm using a Threadworks 01077. That one is really pretty. Wood Rose from Gentle Arts. And then this Cupid, which is a pretty variegated but bright red. Um, because the pattern calls for a bright red. So that's what I did and to give it um, more variegation in those little blossoms I wanted to go with something like Cupid which would dip into dark red at some time so I'm using one strand over two and here's my progress or my start and I don't know when this will come out again I don't have like a specific time that I'm going to be stitching on this but I'm really glad to start this with the ladies and to have this on the go needlework press is so so fun and I will add this to my stitchy whip wheel and we'll see when it comes out again. Next, I'm gonna talk about the two whips that I random rolled with you guys in my last update video for me to work on in the next two weeks or in the following two weeks. So this is Hands-On Design, A Year of Celebration Season Two. The last time, actually in my last update video, I had just completed this March. And since I rolled it again right away, I thought that's perfect to do in April and I think even if this doesn't get rolled I just really enjoyed stitching on these bunnies at the beginning of April so even if I don't roll again um, for this guy coming up in May I'm gonna go ahead and do the May block in May that just feels feels really nice so it's so sweet and cute and I love it and boy I can't tell you how much I love having learned the pin stitch um, if you aren't using the pin stitch for starting when you're not using the loop method, since I don't like to stitch, I know that there are ways to do loop method if you're just stitching with one strand, but I find the pin stitch is really, really good. And um, so search up cross stitch MD. Shiloh has a great video on starting and stopping with the pin stitch. So this is a piece of hot cocoa fabric from Be Stitch Me. Looks like that. I'm going to be stitching them all together and this is 40 count I'm doing one strand over two. Oh, and the other thing about this is I'm using the fat quarter shop conversion of flosses basically the main change that's made is that lot things that were purple in the pattern are now pink so which is a weird change for me because I really like purple, but I saw the conversion on Nicole Spore's channel and I really, really liked it, so I decided I wanted to do it too. So there's that. The other project that I rolled with you guys in the last update for me to stitch on is Dutch Beauty, and I was super excited to see this come out again because I'd had a teeny tiny little start on it during my... Um, my... New Year's Eve 12 by 12 so I was able to get quite a bit more so basically whoops the last time you saw this all I had was parts of this windmill and like that was it so I was working on the border I was working on this big beautiful tree the deer the lady these cute birds this pattern is so so fun super fun it's very it reminds me of my Consider the Lilies from Heartstring Samplery. It's just going to be chock full of motifs. And this is how big it's going to be. <laughs> a lot of stitchers who I greatly admire are also working on this piece. Um, such as Narissa from Narissa's Stitching Lifestyle. And there are a lot of other people as well. I wonder if, is Karen working on this? Karen Combs? I can't remember. Anyway. 
Um, a lot of people have more progress than I do, but I'm enjoying it very much. If you're thinking about starting it and you're thinking, I'll never get that done, don't worry about that. <laughs> worry about that if it ever happens. Just enjoy the stitch. So this is 40 count and I do need a fat half for this for 40 count. All of my projects will be listed in the description bar down below. Also places where I go to shop for things is down there and any channels that I mention will be down there so you can reference that. Um, this is my own floss conversion per usual because I just don't ever feel like picking up the exact flosses anymore. So here are my flosses. And have I, I think I have used this guy a little bit. So, um, yeah, we have a little bit of everything in here. We have weeks, we have gentle arts. If it's on a playing card, that means that I've dyed it myself, which I also really enjoy. So, doesn't look like we've used this guy yet, but I'm sure we will soon. So, it's just, whenever I do conversions, I base it off of the DMC list. And then you can use the DMC floss booklet and then you can find what colors in your stash go closest to the booklet. So I really, really enjoy that. This color, I had been waiting to use this for a while. Isn't that pretty, this chamomile? So I popped it in this pattern. We have green apple. So many fun shades. Freedom from Gentle Arts, Tin Roof from Weeks. We have Scuppermong. Oh, this one's being used a lot, Scuppermong um, from Weeks. So anyway, having such a great time. Spanish Moss is basically gray. That surprised me when I was looking at the name of that one. Anyway, having such a great time with this. Really happy that it came out again. And yeah, that's my project, my progress on Dutch Beauty. So when I filmed my whip parade, it really helped me remember about a bunch of projects that I really love that I hadn't really got much progress on. So it um, has made it really fun to pull out some things in the last two weeks that I hadn't worked on in a while. So for the 25th, on, and on the 25th of every month, I stitch on something Christmassy. So I pulled out my Imaginating Bethlehem and I'll move over a little bit so you can see the image here up on the screen. It's a long, it's a wide and petite stitch. And I got quite a bit done compared to what I had before. I only had like this much right here to the end of this little turret thing. Turret, I don't know. Anyway, I love this. I'm stitching it with Sulky. This is my one project that I'm stitching with Sulky thus far. This is on a 36 count because I know Sulkies are thicker, so um, it actually is really incredible coverage, and it's a little bit thicker than I would normally prefer, but I'm loving it. So this, I'm using this beautiful navy, and it is number 1197. This is another piece of fabric that I have over dyed. It's a little smoky. It's a little tiny bit of navy in there as well, so loving this piece. And I'm really excited that I got this out. And, and when you're not switching between flosses, you're just whew, whipping through it. It's so nice. And I actually stitched this going all the way up and all the way down. Because it's sulky and not variegated and not variegated sulky, I just was doing half crosses all the way up and all the way down. And it was going so fast. I changed it up a little bit for this because that wasn't going to make sense. But for the rest of it, up and down and up and down and it was really delightful, easy stitching. So, really love this piece. I love the nativity, so um, I'm really excited to have that up on my wall, hopefully for this Christmas. Another specific project for a day of the month is on the 30th, I stitch on Blackberry House by Plum Street. This is a project that I'm stitching on the 30th because that's my, my youngest daughter's birthday is on the 30th of September in 2015. So every 30th I get this out. And if you have been with me for a little while, you will recognize that this top of this urn is where I was working this time. So basically I plotted all that white out in there and then I started filling some in. When I got bored of that, I came in and I put this berry in here and that was one day's worth of stitching, this top of the urn. And it is a lot, a lot of fill in but it's really beautiful. I really love it. That bottom there it was such a treat to stitch. 
The font is so beautiful and I love the current that is so prevalent in this design. So this is 40 count dried petal from Fabric and Flare. Woo, couldn't think of that for a minute. So it's gonna be tall. And this is just a project that she picked out of all of my patterns that she thought was cute. So that's why I'm doing it. Doing it for her and it's really, really sweet. So this is over one on 40 count using the called for. What? On the 31st of March, which also happened to be Easter, right? Or was that the 30th? I can't remember, but it was weird that it was in <laughs> March this year. And now we're not in March anymore. Okay, so I stitched on um, my Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain from Kathy Barrick. So, I haven't got this out for a little while, so you may be not be able to recognize, but I've just basically extended that border. So the border really only went as wide as that Owl in the Moon, but I took it all the way over to there. And that's what I did on the one day of stitching on this. So, man, that border, once you get the hang of the pattern of it, that was so fun. I did I did actually mess up and have to rip out a few times and I didn't get out the pattern. I was just going off of, I was just looking over here. So as you can see, I still need to add in all this orange. I just was working with the black. So I did mess up a few times, but it was easy to pull out. <laughs> I'm stitching this with Vicki Clayton Silk Conversions, which I adore. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count, which I have over dyed. And again, a lot of people are working on this right now, and so it's really inspiring to want to pull mine out. So I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe the next time I get this out, I'll just keep going on that border. Just keep going, take it all the way across, and then go down. My friend Heidi from Whips and Kits She's so good at getting her border done and the nerve wracking experience of doing the whole border first and making sure it's going to meet up first. And it's like, ah, and I usually, I get too impatient to do the border. I use, that's why I almost never do it. So when you see me working on border, it's like, whoa, um, I just want to get into the meat. <laughs> I'm not interested in drawing the outline. Um, but this one was pretty fun, I have to say, because there was no switching. There was no switching flosses. I could just do the whole thing like that. It was really nice and easy. So 40 count, one over two, Vicki Clayton Silk, Conversion, Kathy Barrick, Autumn on Lazy Bear. On the 4th of April, I stitched on my patriotic piece. It used to be Salute to Abigail from Blackbird. Now it is Americana Sailboat Sampler from Artful Offerings. What is going on here? little piece of brown floss. So I finished the alphabet, was extending these stripes over here, and then mainly what I did this time was finished outlining the blue and then started filling in the blue. And the little stars are not filled in and they're not gonna be negative space. I believe that they are filled in with white. I just didn't do the white part yet. So that's basically what I did. I have to admit, this was pretty boring compared to what I was working on right before this, which was my Mirabilia, which I'm gonna show you next. So I was kind of like, okay, fourth. I'm tired of stitching on you on the fourth. So I like how Artful Offerings designs are more simplistic, less busy, and they are like more of a statement piece. Um, however, when you go to stitch them, it makes it for a little bit less interesting stitch. But um, I still really, really like it and I will love how it looks in the end. So again, this is a piece of fabric that I dyed. I don't know if you can tell from there, maybe against my purple shirt, that it is a kind of dirty beige olive. So this one is a 40 count again. I'm using one strand over two and I have used my own floss conversion for this. Okay, let's look at Mirabilia. I was in Mirabilia heaven. I only stitched on this for two days. I stitched on it. I did my new start on the first, and then I stitched on this for a couple days, and then I stitched on, let's see, where can I poke my head in? <laughs> and then I stitched on my Americana sailboat. But for the two days that I was stitching on this, I was in here. 
So I was, I am doing beading as I'm going and I was just filling that out more. That section is not completely done. This negative space here, there's like these pillars that go in and around the violin lady. Um, and then you have the beautiful garden in there. So I'm still just working on the second part of the garden. I've decided not to outline stuff because that's boring. And I wanted to do the pretty colors. So I'm stitching this. This is one of my older whips. This is back from my 2022 mania. And this is the only Mirabilia I have started even though I have half a dozen others that I really want to start. <laughs> But I'm not going to start them until I work on, until I complete this because I really, really love it. So I'm using the called for white chelt 32 count. And I didn't mind stitching on it this time. I don't know, like maybe sometimes when I get projects out, I'm like a little cranky about it or something. And then other times I get it out and I'm like, okay, yeah, I really like you. I don't know what was my problem last time. So I liked it. Um, maybe I'll work on her dress next time. I really love those vivid aquas and then the purples up there and her bow. So I am doing her face over one. It's not the best, but hey, that's okay. All of her skin is going to be over one. So anyway, this is my Mira and I would, like I said, I was in Mira heaven. I just did not want to put her down to do patriotic stitching, which is probably another reason why I, when I was stitching that, I was like, <laughs> I want to go back to this. But then I actually did not pick this back up like I intended because I decided to, oh, I needed to work on the seasons of celebrations because I'd rolled that and I forgot that I wanted to do that before my next video. So, um, this is two strands. Shocking. I actually, it didn't even bother me this time. And I was using two strands over two on 32 count and I love her I love her okay just two more whips to talk about so in my whip parade I was talking about how I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep Rosewood Manor to just get a tasket well that inspired me to get it out in the last uh, two weeks and actually in the last one week since I filmed that so I did and so in that whip parade I was talking about how I love this piece of fabric this is evergreen from Be Stitch Me but it may not have been the right piece for this project and I decided I needed to get it out and stitch on it some more and see what I thought about it to decide if I needed to restart this on something else or just be done with it so I decided that I'm going to keep going on this one it's still not my favorite project that I'm stitching ever but when I was stitching it, I wasn't like, yeah, no, I don't like this. I do like it. So um, one of the reasons I think this time around was more enjoyable was, as you can see, I did a lot less changing colors on what I was doing this time. Now, when I first got this out on the day that I was stitching this, I did fill in some more stuff that was going on in here. And then I decided, let's go ahead and pick something that I can stitch on for a while. So I did down here then across and I started filling it in and that was enjoyable because I wasn't Rosewood Manors as a lot Rosewood Manor is a lot of switching flosses there are a lot of different shades of gray in there different shades of blue so yes those of you who told me to just keep going and just see if you enjoy it thank you because that's what I did so We'll see. It won't be the most like drastic standout appearance on the wall, maybe compared to other stuff. Well, okay, no, it will because this fabric is crazy, but um, gorgeous crazy, but there's not gonna be as much of a contrast maybe between the colors. But I picked this on purpose because I wanted all the gray to really show up against it. So, you know, sometimes you pick just the perfect fabric and sometimes you don't, but that's okay. That's okay. Just as long as you enjoy the experience stitching it. So this is a 40 count call for flosses. My last whip that I'm going to share with you today is my two strands a day stitching. And I'm happy to tell you that I am so close to being done. I was going to just finish this up since my last update, 
but I discovered that the brown shade, which the called for floss for this is black. Well, is it 37999? Anyway, I'm using Caterpillar um, from Classic Color Works, I think it is. And I only have like two strands of it left. So I knew I wasn't gonna be able to finish by this video because this counts from one to 12 and every other block is totally filled in with Caterpillar. So I knew I wasn't gonna finish it, so I didn't push super hard for a finish. It's so nice when I'm looking at it like this because I can see, oh, wait a second, you need to fill that in. So anyway, um, yes, so let me tell you what this is. This is Happy Hearts from Birds of a Feather and it's such a fun sampler because it's totally different. There's not a single thing basically that repeats itself. Even these lines that go in between the alphabets, they aren't repeating. Look at that big flower. Oh, it's so cool. I am missing like, along the pattern, I'm missing some little things like that little part right there, which all those little things will get filled in. But yeah, when you're doing it, so basically I, I stitch on this two threads did I say two strands? Well, it doesn't matter because I'm only using one strand. It's a 32 count and I'm doing one strand over two. But anyway, so I do two strands of whatever color I want to do for that day before I do any other stitching. This is on a piece that I over dyed again. And um, so when you're just doing the two strands, sometimes you leave off and you don't complete a section like in the part where it says 2010. That 2010, that's for the year that my husband and I were married. Here's our initials, P and T. Then I have um, my sons are here. My daughters here, H and J. This M is for our last name, Moon. So, and then I feel like there's a few more letters at the bottom. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna omit them or put my parents' initials in there maybe. So anyway, um, I ordered three more skeins of Caterpillar because I really love it as an option. If you don't want to do black, it's a great, very dark brown, variegated. You are getting like a little bit of warmer, um, kind of teddy bear brown at, at parts, but mostly it's just this very dark brown. So I really love it. Anytime I want to warm up a piece instead of using black, I can throw that in. And this is my own conversion. The only thing that is from the original called for is Pebble from Weeks, which is in this gentleman's pants here and a few other places, but everything else is my own floss from Stash. So by my next update video in two weeks, this will be done. I'm so excited. I've been stitching on this every day since January of 2024, since it's my two strands a day. And then it will be time to pick a new two strands a day. So this will be a finish in the next update. So I do have a few new patterns to share. When I was picking up Emmeline Hotchkiss, I also grabbed a couple Reflet de Soie pieces that were just too gorgeous not to snag. You know, I didn't want Emmeline to come alone. So this one is here and I don't wanna mispronounce that. So look up now if you wanna see the title of that one. And then I also grabbed this one, Germain Villarette, maybe, I don't know, but oh, look how pretty. <gasps> oh. um, I believe I got these at 123stitch.com and their Reflet de Soie booklets are pretty budget friendly, you guys. So, big fan of that. So as I said before, a lovely subscriber sent me a few patterns. So I wanna show you what she sent along based upon what she thought I would like. She was just going through her stash and thought, I probably won't stitch these things. Let me see if Phoebe wants any of them. And I said, yes, I would love that. So she sent me a couple patterns from Crochet A Go Go. And we have Merry Christmas and Winter Joy, a whole adorable set of pillows so love those then she sent me this Hardeen Privé that would match my spring that I have upstairs is this the summer one or is this like the garden one I don't I don't know but it's cute she sent this super cute one where it's like a silhouette kind of of Santa 
with a heart going to deliver all the all the prezzies. I bet she saw that I have a few of these Satsuma Street seasonal patterns and I didn't have this one. So, so generous and thoughtful. Thank you, Kathy. And then she sent this big bad boy. So if I ever, <laughs> I really actually want to start this like ASAP, but I have been so slow going on my Halloween at Hawk Run, but this is Christmas at Hawk Run. So, oh, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. So incredibly thoughtful of you and generous, and I absolutely adore it. Oh, these guys. I think I just saw on, um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher, she just finished this one, or she's working on it and, and loves it. So this is really fun to watch her progress on this now that I have this in my stash and I'm excited to start it. So thank you, Kathy. So it's time to chat about plans. I'm filming this on the 7th. So I haven't shared with you in this video my progress on my birthday piece, which I stitch on the 7th of every month, but I'll pop that up here so you can remember what that one is. So I have my 7th stitching. I'll have my 10th stitching, which is on Pretty Little London, my anniversary piece with my husband. And then I don't think I have any stitching that are on specific days until after my next update video. So now I'm going to choose a couple of pieces with you. So I use two different randomizers as ways to choose my projects. So I use this pretty random app. I put in there the maximum number is 23. So it's going to choose for me one project from my mania. So it chose 13. And that means that it is the Dutch Steps of Life. Yay! So, so excited. So these are all my mania pieces. Some are carried over from 22 to 23. If they have a dot by them, that means I finished it. I need to put a dot by half the fun. And when May comes up, that means I'm going to put a current... I'm probably not going to put new stuff in here. I'm probably going to put current whips in here, I think. I'm just not really feeling the itch to start a bunch of new stuff right now. So probably because I'm still like on a start hangover from my... 12 by 12 for New Year's Eve. So I all those things, I just have teeny tiny starts on them. So you will definitely see Dutch Steps, Dutch Steps of Life come out in the next video. And then my next, the next way that I choose a random project is my tiny decisions wheel. And I have all my whips loaded in here so then I can just go like that. And sometimes I use this to choose a project when I've finished something else. Oh, <gasps> Fruits of Plenty, yeah! Ooh, I'm so excited to get that back out. So that's Modern Folk Embroidery. I'll put that up here so you can see what that looks like. And so those two things you'll definitely see me stitching on, um, stitching progress on in the next update video. So now we're going to talk about a little bit of book chat. So if you are not interested at all, then I will see you back in the next video. But if you'd like to hear what I've been reading lately, then we're gonna go ahead and get into that now. So I actually did not do an update on reading in my last, I didn't do a portion on reading in my last update um, video. So I have quite a few books to talk about today. So I'm doing a Brandon Sanderson Stormlight Archive reread with my friend Leilani. So we got through book one, which is called The Way of Kings. Then we read book two, which is Words of Radiance, and that's where I was at, I think, the last time we talked about it. Since then, we read all of Oathbringer. These are like 55 to 60 hour books, listening on audiobook at 1.35 speed. Anyway, if you like fantasy, if you like like super clean fantasy, just epic stories, world building, just imagination, out the door and not too hard to follow. Sanderson is awesome for that. I've read all the Mistborn books. I'm rereading the Stormlight Archive with my friend Leilani, who's first time reading it through. So we finished Oathbringer, then we moved on to the fourth one, which is Rhythm of War. We're currently reading that right now. I read a little bit faster than her, so I am also reading some other things at the same time. So I'm also reading The Name of All Things by Jen Lyon. Jen Lyons. And I started with the first one, which is The Ruin of Kings, and realized that I'd already read it. But it is, that book is very confusing. I listened to like a two and a half hour long um, reading vlog from this girl who loves the book and was rereading it again with her Patreons, or patrons. And um, that really helped me to remember everything that happened. So then I could start into book two and get going and you're kind of 
you're hearing about another character's like whole backstory right now. So anyway, if you've read those books, let me know if you struggled with them, what you did to keep all these characters straight. One of the reasons why it's so difficult is because there's like the these magical stones and one of the stones makes it so that if you kill so this is it this is fantasy again so it's dragons and sorcerers and demons and other lots of kinds of mag magical creatures if you kill the person who's wearing this special stone you actually die and that person goes into your body and is now you so it's so kind of confusing but like i'm interested enough in the story to want to keep going but it's it's a little bit hard to wrap my mind around not a little bit a lot of it so anyway if you can't tell i like fantasy um this other series that i read since the last time we chatted about books was the kingdom of the wicked series but series by carrie maniscalco the first book takes place in italy in the past and so it's it's a really beautiful um setting and her family owns a restaurant and you've just got all these romantic italian um the setting is just really beautiful but kind of like the really main thing about the book is that she and her sisters are witches who live in italy and they have an encounter with one of the princes of hell and she has to solve this murder mystery kind of and so that's like the first book is in italy in the second book you actually get transported to the seven circles of hell and you meet the different princes and who are for like wrath and pride and gluttony and like that and it was kind of fun meeting the different princes but after i'd met them all i quickly became pretty disinterested with this book because the author does this thing where she kind of just like tada makes this plot point happen where this less magical thing happens where you're, where it's supposed to just like explain a bunch of stuff that had happened before and it's like you didn't have to work for it you, it just kind of happened and it's just not a fulfilling read you're not sitting there being like oh you're just kind of like wait you just made up this thing to explain it in five seconds it's just so anyway i actually don't really recommend that book series i kind of was being stubborn and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna finish it. It's just three books long, I'll just finish it. But I don't recommend it. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. I mean, it was it was okay at best. <laughs> For me, that's my personal opinion. One book though that I did read again in between um all the Sanderson books. Oh, we also read Dawn Shard, which is 3.5 in the Stormlight. It's like in between books three and four, and it goes it's like a novella about some of the characters that you don't get a lot from in the other books anyway so we also read that then i also read a book from jim butcher it's the first in his series let me see what the gentleman's name the dresden files so this is like a private eye but he's also a wizard <laughs> So it's set in modern day, although I feel like these were probably written in the 90s or something. It, it wasn't like, hmm, the feminism really wasn't quite there how I wanted it to be, but I really enjoyed the writing. And it wasn't just like convenient plot points coming up. It, I felt like it was a really good murder mystery. You know, I, I enjoyed it. So anyway, if that sounds fun to you, um, that one came highly recommended to me and I had it in my TBR in my Audible and I was just like looking through and being like what I haven't out read yet. So anyway, if that sounds fun to you, like a crime murder mystery, but he's also a wizard. So there's going to be like vampires and werewolves and all kinds of magical things in the series, then give it a try because I really liked it. So that's from Jim Butcher. It's called Stormfront. That was the first book. So um, that's all my book talk. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. So I'm so glad that you could join me today. I will see you back in two weeks with more stitching updates. I hope that you get so much stitchy time until then. Hopefully some outdoor stitchy time because you have beautiful spring weather headed your way. 
Um, I hope you subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you back in the next one. Take care until then. Bye.